Good evening. This is Tuesday, February, well, February 2nd. It's the Tuesday, December um, 15th meeting of the community. Wednesday. Wednesday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a day at some point at some time. At right. some point in some place. As a preliminary matter, please note uh, that this meeting is being recorded and some of the attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that uh, other folks may be able to see you. Anything you decide to screen share on your computer or anything you broadcast will be captured and recorded. I'm Tim Wheeler, chair of the committee. Uh, let me confirm that all members are here. So we've got Elaine is here. And Carolyn is here. Yeah. And MJ is here. And yep. I'm here. We have a quorum. And uh, we'll call the meeting to order at ooh, 6 20, 29. Did someone? Yeah, someone's got something going on, <laughs> noise wise. Uh, my computer is trying to die. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> there it goes. Um, we'll open the meeting. It's conducted remotely, consistent with Governor Baker's executive order from uh, whenever in regard to COVID-19, specific information and guidelines for the remote participation of members to the public can be found on the Town of Berlin website. And uh, we're allowed to work through this Zoom platform as a result of the governor's executive order. And that's enough of that. Right? Right. And does someone want to move them, those two sets of minutes? I'll move. You approve the minutes. Thank you. I second. second. All Not right, me. and we'll take a roll call. Um, Carolyn? Aye. Elaine? Aye. MJ? Aye. And Tim aye. votes aye, so that's great. Excellent. Now, the main reason I was hoping we could meet um, quickly was just to get two actions done primarily, and then we can have a little further discussion about some other stuff, but we have dues to pay to the um, consortium, the Preservation Act Consortium, and that's what seventeen hundred and fifty dollars. Um, it must it, I it must be based on a formula that looks at what our revenue is and what our community size is and all that sort of stuff. So, were we um, not paying dues before? Or did we get the first year free? Or I was a little confused on that. Yep, yeah, we get the first year free. And, uh, and then Stuart sent us a nice note saying, I hope you've enjoyed being part of the consortium and if you want to continue, um, pay up. And <laughs> it, it's, I mean, they're so responsive. I mean, the staff isn't big, but whenever we've asked a question, we've got an immediate response within a couple of days. So uh, they're a valuable, valuable, valuable resource. Plus, I, I think all of you have probably gone to their database and. Uh, I mean, the, the fact that you can look and see what all these other towns are doing, I mean, it, it's going to really give us, I think, uh, any of the entities that benefit from this an opportunity to look and, and find examples of projects that we might not have thought of otherwise. And we yeah. can always look at those and say, aha, you know, this, right. this has been done in other towns, so we can feel comfortable about doing it here. Yeah. Yeah, they're all very open about what they're doing, so. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's wonderful. So, do we have a motion to, to pay that bill? I'll, I'll make a motion. All right, and we have a second? Yeah. And second. then any discussion on that? Everybody's happy. We'll take a roll call on that. So, Carolyn? Aye. Elaine? Aye. MJ? Aye. And I'll vote aye. Um, and then the, the next issue has to do with this opportunity to perhaps um, hire an assistant to work with us. And it became clear. Oh, no. Margaret. 
you froze and there for a minute. It I became, did. It, became it became clear. Yeah, when I began to talk to Margaret about, actually, let me put in my other mic here. I be. No, I don't know as I can on this one. No. When I started to talk to Margaret about um, procurement and, and the oversight of some of the um, budgets that we were going to be working with, the expenditure of funds, and we've got to be fairly diligent about it. And, and because the procurement laws are, as we talked about in town meeting in regard to some other projects, um, more and more complex all the time, um, we began to look at what other towns were doing. And so um, Stoughton was doing some good stuff and Stowe was doing some good stuff. They had clear examples of job descriptions. And so I hybridized those two to come up with that sample anyway. And I think primarily what I'd like to get done at this point is sort of a, an acknowledgement that it's something that we want to do, if indeed that's the fact. And then we can go to the selectmen, ask for their approval, and then it goes to the personnel board and we get their approval and then it could come back to us and we could massage the language a little bit and maybe after the first of the year be in a position where we could start to um, put that out as a possible opportunity for someone and hopefully maybe someone in town would take us up on the on the uh, opportunity. So if he, let's, I mean, what are, what are people's thoughts? Um, is this something that we'd like to pursue and, and what do we see as the pros and the cons? If it, does anybody have thoughts about that? And welcome James and uh, Eloise. They're both um, muted. Um, so pros, I mean, there, there are certainly many benefits, not the least of which as we, like you were saying, as we get more projects going and somebody needs to keep track of all of them, um, that is going to be huge and, and definitely something we need. Um, the only potential issue or trouble that I see is we had a hard time finding someone for conservation for very part time. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm, Maddie is wonderful and she will be even better when she gets more familiar with wetland stuff, but she had no wetlands experience. She just had a lot of, um, she actually works for the company that's doing the Asian longhorn beetle study. Mm -hmm. um, so she has, you know, had enough, uh, certainly smart enough and willing enough and everything, but had a, a working knowledge of systems and ecosystems and everything that we felt like she would be the good choice, but no one with actual wetlands conservation agent experience even applied. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it, that would be the only potential issue. Certainly someone with pure procurement experience and then they can learn the CPA aspect of it. But um, just in my experience, that is the only problem we may have. Mm -hmm. Would we then- How many hours did you, did you have for, the, for your assistant? Uh, it's eight hours a week. Okay. Yeah. M MJ, what are you gonna well, say? Would we need to change the, the language and because that didn't we say something like we required three years of experience or something to that effect that if we're not necessarily expecting to find someone with the experience uh, is that so something we where we just put it out and lower our standards when they come or right, broaden, right. Yeah. or maybe maybe change the word require to preferred for yeah. or something you know that gives us the wiggle room to hire somebody who will be capable of doing the job and capable of learning the, the specifics that we need them to learn what kind of a wage are you paying her well yeah what are, what are you paying carolyn uh, so she, what's it, like a grade seven step, whatever. I think it's twenty seven seventy seven an hour. Did, 
it, you think the the role that we're asking this person to to play is comparable to to the type of uh, role Dep they're playing? Depending here? on the number of projects we have going on and the complexity of them, it might even be more. Yeah. Um, you know, it's going to be someone who needs to have um, procurement experience, experience with. Um, I mean, I assume they're also oversight, right? Like how that the money is being spent the right way. So somebody who knows about putting in a tennis court, someone who knows about putting in a foundation, someone who knows about building affordable housing. You know, I mean, it's it's a fairly um, broad range of skills that someone will need to have. Other thoughts, James, Eloise? I think I'm just wondering um, if we'll have trouble just based on everywhere's looking for work. So, you know, how many people are there out there looking? Did they have any trouble with conservation with finding anyone? Like, how long did it take to find somebody? So, it, it probably only took, if we had, it would have taken longer if we had decided that someone needed to have a uh, specific wetlands experience. You know, we probably had the job posted on, I think she posted it on Indeed. We had the job posted for three weeks. We got six applications three of which three people uh, actually maybe we got margaret only passed on six ap applications to me and those were people with even remotely the right kind of experience three of those people chose to not come in and interview so we only interviewed three people and actually we only interviewed two people because one of the pr people pulled out right like an hour before they were supposed to show up hmm. so uh, one of the things Margaret said was that procurement, um, we, you could require that they become certified within six months and they could take the program that they need to in order to be certified. So that she, she felt there might be some flexibility with that, which gives us a, a chance for a bigger pool, I sus suspect anyway. So. Right. And we would pay for the class? Yeah, I mean, we yeah. could certainly say that that would be the case, and then they take the job and and get the training, and then go off and uh, right <laughs> go work for a bigger somebody town. else. <laughs> um, um, Elaine, were you going to say something? Oh, she's gone. Oh. I'm sorry. Oh, I just I just had to re I I wanted to remove an alarm. It, I realized it was right by my computer, <laughs> and if it. Uh, went off, um, we'd all go deaf. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about well, that. Th well, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, what was I gonna say? Oh, um, I think anyone well-trained in office procedure um, could handle it. I really do, you know. Sure, but would, uh, would they be willing to work 10 hours a week? with no benefits and you know it would have to be someone who I mean ideally it's someone who lives in town who's looking for some part-time work maybe who's retired and um yeah the, the it it seems as though this person would have a fairly flexible schedule well, this isn't a committee that is going to meet a lot you know and so having to to attend our meetings um isn't going to drain them in terms of it's not like conservation or planning board or something like that where you've got these regular consistent meetings you're attending the meetings doing the minutes all that sort of stuff but um the in between meetings there's a significant amount of activity and if you can really adjust your schedule to your your own time frame um and get the job done it seems like it's it would it would work out well for somebody right 
Yep. And it may just take us a while to find the right person. Yeah. You know? Yep. Um, yeah. So any other thoughts? Um, I mean, again, I, like I said, the main goal right now is to get something in front of the um, select board to get them their approval and on to personnel. And then we can get some definition from them as to how they classify the, the role. And then uh, we can get it back and polish it up. That gives us time individually to look at the those two couple drafts and then we can also look at some other towns and there may be very well some opportunities from some other communities to sort of steal from what they've done. I did say to Margaret that in Stoughton's case they called the person a contractor and in Stowe's case they called them an employee and mm. I thought I would reach out to Stoughton and see if they've contracted with somebody that does this for, or through an organization that does it for multiple towns. Sure. Um, and I thought I might also uh, ask the commission, the central mass, central mass, if if this is something that they might very well um, want to take on as as a as as an activity that they could provide service to a number of different towns, um, because you know there are a lot of towns that are going to be small like us and more and more are joining in all the time so um they'd all, probably all be in the same boat i would think and maybe that's something the commission would like to put into their uh offerings so right yeah so do if there's no more thought or discussion do we have a motion to uh, um request the select board to review and approve this and then send it on to personnel so we could polish it up. So moved. Second. All right. And any further discussion? All right. Oh. So we'll do a roll call. Carolyn? Aye. Elaine? Aye. MJ? Aye. James? Aye. Eloise? She's there somewhere. And I say aye. So... <laughs> It's enough of a vote, so we're all set. Um, Does anybody else know how to operate Zoom? If I were to make somebody a co-host? Yeah. No. Who does? Yeah. MJ does? MJ? Yeah, yeah I, I right. host cultural council one, so. Awesome, so go. I'm gonna make you a co-host. That way you guys don't have to leave at seven. Yeah, but maybe we want to and go eat supper. Well, <laughs> that is up to you. But that way I can leave in 10 minutes, get uh, get on to my meeting a little early, and Good. you guys can. That would, that's so, wonderful. So there were two other items. One, um, Elaine emailed me and, and uh, wanted us to recognize the fact that the um, Ag Commission is applying for the use of some community preservation funds for the... Um, development of a fence around the community garden. That's the way I understand it. Is that that's correct, Elaine? Yep. yep. So that's that's one project that we'll be reviewing as we get into the new year, and be, we'll be putting that on the warrant if we approve it um, for sometime in mid February. Um, I so do have a question. I yep. do have a question regarding not that one, but um, something came up just yesterday where we can get some uh, matching funds from the state, you know, if we apply for the grant. So we hopped right on that. Okay. Um, if we use the 100,000 that we have already set aside, you know, for the work at the Bullard House. Right. This is historical. Um, what money do we have? I mean, is it possible for me to put in another um, request? I don't know how, what kind of money we have left. I haven't. Uh, well, what we, what we did is we took... Um, $71,000 from fiscal 20 and 21 to, to put into that pool. And then I'm trying to remember the specific language, but it almost seems like we took the remainder, the 23 or whatever, out of the historical, out of the, the general pool from 21. So my sense is that you would in fiscal 23 count you know when we go to town meeting to vote on this 
we've got money from fiscal 22's revenue that should be somewhere around 56,000 or so right. for historical that's that's free and available right because uh -huh. we just got the state match right and that was right and it 280, was 280 and 280 so 560 so right. nobody gets 10% off the top um so you you could what was your match at what would your match have to be um well, they'll do a 50% match on a project, okay? So we already have 100,000. So we can actually ask for another 100,000. Really? That's not saying we can get it. And we won't find out until after town meeting. We haven't even had time to discuss this. You know, Colin yeah. and I just found out yesterday and we jumped on it to get all the information. Yeah. And um, so so this is, a, this is a, a good chunk to start if we get it. Um, and I was just concerned that um, maybe the, maybe there wasn't enough money for me to ask for um, for in the spring because we are going to need an architect mm -hmm. and uh, you know for the overall project and um, there are a number of things that we have listed um, that have to be done at the Bullet House. But we'd like oh. to get the, we, we this gives us a chance to get the outside completely done insulated. You know, if we can do this. So clearly, <laughs> there's there's fifty six, um, and then, depending on the will of the committee, you can tap into some of that's you know sixty five. Well, yeah, sixty five percent that's left over if we continue to take off five percent for admin. Um, what would be my deadline for applying? I I know it's. <laughs> It's pretty close. Yeah. I have to get yeah. mine in too. Yeah, I mean, theoretically, we, we set a December 1st date for, but again, we're playing catch up on all these. So I think the committee right. certainly, will. If, right. if we have to review it and write an article for the warrant and the warrant's gonna close in mid-February, I would think that we'd want projects to be proposed to us by you know sometime early in January um, and that way if we were to meet in mid-January we could um, review those proposals have some presentations and then meet again later in January finalize our our approvals and then write the articles so we could submit them to the selectmen so they could be on the warrant yeah Does that make sense to folks yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, how much of the pool would, would there be do you think at this point how much of the the larger pool right because um, i know a lot of it's already spoken for so well it is i mean it it, it isn't necessarily right. spoken for and you know we what was the figure that uh ag was looking for for the fencing i don't recall i don't have that with me at the moment um yeah, i'm trying to remember i don't think that was a budget buster it wasn't though. wasn't huge but it no. uh but he has met with someone and he has better numbers at this point. He just wondered, uh -huh. um, you know, when you'd want him to present that. I would say again, that, you know, if he can put something together so we can have it for the 1st of January, that'd be great. Okay. Cause then we could share it with the committee and, and then we could set up, I think we should agree on our next meeting date sometime tonight. And, and uh, Right, well, I have three minutes. So, so. When's good, when would be good for you, Carolyn, for a meeting in, in uh, early January. See. January. So the second week of January, we have planning on the 11th, right? Right. And other than that, I don't have anything that week. So uh, Wednesday would work, Wednesday the 12th would work for Wednesday you? the 12th, yep. That wouldn't be bad because that would give people some a little bit of freedom that first week of January to polish up something to get to us. And then we could look at it. Um, we could meet again later in January, the first week in February. And then because uh, the conservation meets the second of February, first and third. First and third. Yeah. So we yeah. meet the fifth and the 19th in January. And then February, you'd meet the second. Right. Second and 16th, yeah. Okay. 
So if uh, the 12th is good for people, we can plan on that and, and I'll get the posting set up in uh, the Zoom link um, reserved. Is that all right with everyone? Yeah, what, day what, time? Time? what day is that? That's a Wednesday. Okay. Wednesday, uh, 7, 7.30. What's good? MJ, what's good for you? A any Wednesdays are um, free all day. Free. And James, what time does everybody go to bed? <laughs> he's already in bed. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's Hello? say, step. you want to say seven? Seven works for me. Seven works. Okay, good. Seven. Um, did before you, you you asked about publicity and in uh, pushing some of the items that we've approved out into the public domain, Carolyn? Yeah, I've had several people say to me, you know, that um, when they tell people what. Um, what we're doing with CPA funds, they're like, oh, wow, that's great. You know, we should, you should tell people, we as a committee should tell, let people know what is being done. Now, you know, um, Louise actually suggested to me we're putting something in the Powder House News that newsletter. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, what about a sign that says, like a cheap one that this project funded by you know the cpa funds and berlin taxpayers or something like that thank you hmm. like if we put it outside the bullard house or at the lyman linden thing you could say this land saved by berlin taxpayers and your cpa fund right yeah yep so um, we'll probably get that donated by a sign company around or something i can work on that yeah. Cool. That would be great. Um, all right. I really do have to jump though. So. Well, you can talk to to uh, <laughs> Louise about Powder House News. Who we should contact? Is it Bob Blair or is it somebody else? Uh, I you're going to see. You're going to see her in a minute, right? I am. So you can ask her then. Yep. Thank you, Carolyn. You're welcome. MJ, you're full host now, so. Okay, I'll, oh. I'll try not to let the power go to my head. Yeah. All right, yeah. <laughs> now I have to figure out, because all I see is end. I don't see, oh, leave webinar. All right, bye guys. Bye. bye. Thanks. Elaine's gone as well. Um, that was, so those were the, I think those were the four items that I really wanted to make sure we covered was a schedule and then let people know that we would be taking on um, more proposals for projects and that we'd be looking at those in that mid-January meeting. Um, and then the publicity stuff. So we can continue to think more about that, but the signage notion and the Powder House News one is, uh, those are quite appropriate, that's good. Other other items that we want to talk about, um, or do we all want to bow out and uh, take care of other business? Everybody all set? I, I can't think of any other committee business at the moment. Good. So do we have a motion to adjourn? I motion we adjourn. <laughs> Second. Perfect. And the roll call would be MJ. Aye. James. Hi. And uh, Eloise. Thank you, Eloise.